we just enjoyed life so much. And um, it was kind of the, the dream family. We had four kids. They were all doing great. Uh, our two older daughters had graduated from college. And actually a week before, we were in, in uh, at my daughter's college where she was graduating from Cedarville University. I just looked down the row and I just felt so blessed. I felt so proud. Everything just seemed so perfect. She just was in awe of, of this family that God had given us. And then suddenly I just started feeling like a panic feeling. And she even said, please, Lord, don't let anything happen. Don't let anything happen to any of my children. And um, it was just five days later that Melissa was killed. Our daughter, Julie, moved to an area to teach at a Christian school two months after Melissa died. Julie shared with her students about Melissa dying and about her life. And one little girl raised her hand and said, I want to trust Jesus just like Melissa did because I want to go to heaven when she, like she did. We were so thrilled to know that someone had accepted Jesus. But I also felt like, why did my daughter have to die so that someone else would accept Jesus? I thought there's so many other ways that she could accept Jesus. Melissa could have lived to a ripe old age and she could have glorified God through her life with having children and, and many, many things that she could have done and she would have done, I think. But I'm not God. I'm not omniscient. I'm not all-knowing. He is. Trust is probably the hardest thing that I have trouble with. How do you trust him and not feel like God's going to take another child and now we've got grandchildren in the picture? Is something going to happen to somebody? Trusting God is more real now than before. Before it was more of an automatic thing. We're believers. We, you know, we put our faith in Christ and sure we trust God. That's what we do as Christians. Now it's more of an active thing. We're not waiting for the other shoe to drop or anything like that or waiting for something tragic to happen. We feel our job now is to do the next step in the whole process, and that is cling to God, trust Him, understand that He is sovereign and in control, and our lives are just going to have to be lived that way, with, with a, a tragedy in our background, but confidence that God knows what He's doing. You know, one could look at God's sovereignty and say, you're pretty cold and indifferent about your daughter. It's okay, God. It's not okay. Let me, let me tell you, it's not okay. I, I hurt every day from Melissa being gone, but I can't bring her back. I'm never going to see her again. That hurts. I'm never going to throw a softball with her again or, or hug her or hear her come home and say, it's all good, which is one of her favorite sayings. So it hurts like everything to have her gone. But then on the other side, I have to, I have to think through the theology of it. He knew what he was doing and we still love him. And if we can have that be the message and God be glorified through this tragedy, then as much as it hurts, we're going we're gonna to be good with it. GriefShare is a support group open to men and women dealing with the death of a loved one. To learn more about GriefShare, speak to the GriefShare leader at your church.